As is often the case on most of my overland adventures, I didn't arrive at camp until late Friday night after work. Finding a campsite after dark can sometimes mean that you may not always find the ideal spot with the most iconic views. But every once in a while, you get lucky. And the view you wake up to the next morning is both awe-inspiring and breathtaking. We're up here on 395, heading northbound. Uh, it's myself, the uh, the JK, and then the Tacoma. Uh, guys, that was an awesome night. I got in about 10, 11 p.m. due to some uh, uh, scheduling stuff at home. So, got on the road late. You know, the whole time I'm driving up to our campsite with a pin that Scott dropped me. Um, I didn't really know what I was driving next to. So, waking up in the morning and seeing that backdrop of the eastern side of the Sierras was just unreal. Um, highly recommend you guys check out the Alabama Hills. Uh, if you haven't before. So the guy I'm with, Scott, uh, Halfback Will Travel is his Instagram handle, uh, has excellent landscape photography. Uh, the guy goes to Wyoming, goes up to Alaska, kind of all over taking pictures of wildlife and, um, and just everything in the outdoors. He has an awesome overland setup, which I hope to show you here a little bit later today, um, but highly recommend you check out his Instagram at Halfpack underscore Will Travel. Anyways, we're gonna keep heading up here north on 395 and I'll touch base in a bit. All right, guys, so we got back down the, the hill. Uh, unfortunately, we just couldn't get any farther up the, with the snow uh, without a change or anything like that. Uh, we had a Rubicon with 
lockers up front and rear and still couldn't make it. So we found this spot a little bit lower in elevation. Uh, we're pretty much right where the snow starts. Uh, as you can see, we have an incredible view behind us of uh, what I think is the Owens Valley, uh, looking down on the town of Bishop uh, below. And then we have the Sierras to the west. So another great spot. Uh, we're gonna get ourselves some flat ground here, set up the tent and then get the fire going. So we'll see you in a bit. So pretty excited for the meal tonight. Um, I'm going to try out uh, cooking a pizza in my cast iron skillet. Now normally you have a Dutch oven for this um, so that you can put coals on top, but unfortunately I don't own one. So we'll give it a shot and see how it works. Um, I got this frozen pizza dough. So we're just going to just spread it out, put on some uh, pizza sauce, some mozzarella, and then uh, I forgot the pepperoni unfortunately, but uh, we'll go with some um, olives and then uh, throw her on the fire and see how it turns out. All right, so we'll add a little oil. Got some uh, Rios's, Rouse's pizza sauce. Dab on there. Alrighty, I think we're ready to throw her on the fire. As close as you yeah, can, yeah. You, you just have to rotate it every leg. Yeah. yeah, that'll do great. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's double up. Oh yeah. That's doing real good. I think we're done. Woo! This is really hot. Let's see if we can even get it up at the bottom. There we go. And there's our pizza.
I'm sitting here with uh, Scott with Half Pack Will Travel. Uh, I think I met Scott originally through Instagram. Yep. Uh, reached out to me. Scott is an awesome uh, photographer, both landscape, wildlife, um, and basically uses his Jeep to facilitate uh, his ability to get out to uh, get out to nature and explore and take some awesome photos. So, Scott, can you just tell us real quick about what you do? Sure. Uh, so, I was a former active duty Marine. I got out and decided to stick around California. Uh, I slowly got interested in photography, mostly because I was interested in traveling, and photography kind of facilitated that for me. So. With the pandemic, I know uh, a lot of people have been affected by that as well. You don't get to travel as much, so I already had the Jeep and I already had somewhat of a setup and I decided to go ahead and turn it into a complete overlanding rig. I kind of come from a more of a backpacking background, so a lot of the time I would, you know, I'm a small, lightweight and go hit the trailhead for a few days and go off into the wilderness. But with this setup, I can do both. Uh, I can kind of live and work out of this, leave it at the trailhead, go hiking for a couple days, come back, and I still have things like shower, propane for uh, for the stove and stuff like that. It makes life a little bit easier. Got some of the creature comforts out in the wilderness as well. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing you'll see with the setup too, you know, whereas for my use, most of the time I'm going one to two days max. Uh, Scott here actually, after we finish, is heading up to Death Valley. He's going to spend an additional couple days. So his uh, rig, which we'll show you here in a second, is completely built out uh, in order to facilitate him being out weeks at a time, which I think is awesome um, and lends itself to his uh, incredible photography that it puts out. Uh, we're going to go over his uh, his rig here, but if you haven't checked him out before, look up Half Pack uh, Will Travel on mm -hmm. Instagram yep. uh, and be sure to follow him. All right, let's take a look. This is uh, my basic setup here in the cargo area rear of the vehicle. Uh, I guess we'll work our way left to right. Uh, so up here I have a, an awning from OVS. Uh, it's the bat wing, so it folds all the way around the back here of the vehicle. Why that's important is during rain showers or snowstorms, anything like that. Typically I'm cooking right here in the back of the Jeep because I have the access to the fridge and everything. So I want to be, you know, protected by the elements while I'm while I'm cooking and uh, and preparing my food. Uh, next, right here we have from Expedition Essentials. This is a propane tank mount. So it's DOT approved. Uh, you have to get a specific DOT uh, propane tank, typically five or 11 pounds. This one will hold 11 pound propane tank, which will last me several weeks. Uh, I can use it for heating up water for my stove. Um, and you know, it's, it's has several different functions and, and allows me to travel farther and stay out longer uh, for sure. Above the window back here, we have the road shower by Yakima. Uh, this is, I believe the eight gallon one. Uh, the Road Shower 4. This not only is practical for camping, but if you have dogs that you like to take to the beach and out uh, on trails and stuff, you can wash them down real quick afterwards. It's pressurized. It gets pressurized by the hose here. You just connect a regular garden hose to the end here, take this off, and uh, you can pressurize the shower that way. Uh, so it doesn't need any fancy uh, extra parts or anything to, uh, to, get it, to get it working. This is a 50 quart 47 liter ARB fridge. Uh, this works great for me for 10 to 12 days. I can get plenty of food in here um, and keep it cold. With this, you really do either need something like an extra battery like this or a battery pack like this or a deep cycle battery um, because this does have a safety mechanism in it. If, you're, if it senses that your battery is getting too low, it will cut off in order to save your battery so that you can start your vehicle um, to head back to civilization. So next up we have the Goal Zero Yeti 500. It's a lithium battery. Uh, so when my when it gets too when my battery gets too low for the fridge to run, I'll plug that in here. But it's also important for me as a photographer to keep my batteries charged for my various cameras, my drone, um, and my video equipment. So always having this on hand. Right now you can see the input light is blinking. I have it hooked up to a 100 watt uh, solar panel outside in the sun. So we're trying to get some recharge there. It's a cold night last night and batteries don't do as well in the cold. Plus I had the fridge plugged in. So that's why it's so low right now. You can tell what's nice about it. It'll tell you not only how many watts you have coming in from the solar panel or whatever your input device is, but it also tells you right here how many hours it will take at that current wattage to uh, to charge the to recharge to a full battery. All right, so holding up both of my my battery pack and my drone here are my overland vehicle systems uh, lockable drawers so these are great because they keep my photography equipment uh, locked and secure when I'm not at the Jeep and then uh, down here at the bottom I keep all of my cooking supplies and things like that what's also nice about these is this has a pull-out cutting board so I can do some quick cuts and things on this, uh, clean it, wipe it off, slide it right back in, it stays out of the way and it's one less thing that I have to worry about when I travel. So these have been great, something to keep in mind, they don't mount directly
directly to the floor. So uh, we, my neighbor and I had to custom fabricate this, uh, this mounting bracket in order to mount the fridge and the, uh, the drawers to the uh, cargo area of the Jeep back here. This is an AEV fuel caddy. So when you're out in the back country and you're gonna be away from, from fuel, this is a good thing to have. This thing holds an extra 10 gallons of fuel. And then it comes with this siphon right here that is a self-siphoning um, tube. Basically, you just stick it down in there, run it to your fuel tank, wiggle it around a little bit, and it starts to flow, and it'll uh, it'll move the gasoline by itself from the fuel caddy to your gas tank. And the most important thing on the Jeep, this is called a garb. Uh, it is a garbage and recycling bag. So I've got my garbage bag over here, my recycle here. These are made by the, our Canadian military friends up north. Uh, great product, really high quality, um, great build. I uh, sprayed it down with some protectant so that it won't fade as quickly in the sun. And it also has these awesome straps inside. So on the way out, you can actually carry bundles of wood in these straps, two or three bundles of wood. And then once you burn those at the fire, you set up your garbage and recycling bags. Because as we all know, as outdoors men and women, uh, the most important principle that we could possibly have is the leave no trace. You want to leave the environment as good or better than when you got there. So. Thank you for taking the time to take this tour of the Jeep with me, and hopefully you got something from it. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on halfpack underscore will travel on Instagram. breakfast uh, got our stuff packed up and about to leave camp this is a great uh, lesson here guys when you plan to go somewhere uh, always have some backups right so couldn't make it up to the top of Coyote Flats thankfully in your national forest here has just a ton of forest roads guy GPS was a huge help for us uh, trying to find a new spot um, and you know life gives you lemons here you turn into lemonade which in this case we woke up to beautiful views uh, and really couldn't ask for anything more Thanks again for tuning into this video. Please like the video if you do. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't. Uh, and leave any comments or feedback you have on the, uh, on the comment section below. We'll see you on the next one.